Holy God, we pray that you would speak your words to us this morning. May the words of my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this week, both of our healing lessons are about healing. We are continuing. This is the final week in our sermon series that we've entitled God's Calling, where we've talked about the ways that God calls us into discipleship, what that looks like, how God calls us, and then what God calls us to. So this week, we are talking about healing and wholeness. And as I spent the last week with my parents, um, with my dad in the hospital all week, praying and uh, being with them, healing has obviously been on my mind a lot this week. So last night, I'd actually written um, a whole other sermon, and then the Holy Spirit just nagged at me and nagged at me and nagged at me until I finally gave in and said, okay, God, you must know what you want to say. So I deleted it and wrote something else. So... Whatever comes out is what God wants us to hear today. It probably might not make as much sense as the one that I spent the whole rest of the week writing, but it is what it is. I've lost count of the number of times that I've been with someone before or after surgery. The number of people that I've prayed for to be healed has to number somewhere in the thousands as we share our requests each week together. The word for healing that's used in the New Testament that's used uh, in this lesson we just read, the root word of it is sozo. It's the same root word for salvation and wholeness. So really, healing is synonymous with being made whole. As I was reading last night about healing in scripture, one piece that I read made a distinction between our Western understanding of sickness and a non-Western one. They said that in non-Western medicine, the main problem with sickness is the experience of the sick person being dislodged from his or her social moorings and standing, their social interaction, their place in everyday society with family members and friends and neighbors and village mates comes to a halt when they become sick. Sick. So to be healed is to be restored to one's social network. Whereas in contemporary Western medicine, we view disease as a malfunction of some organism that can be remedied and cured, assuming that the cause and cure is known. So we focus on restoring a sick person's ability to function, to do, but they focus on restoring them to their place in society. Often overlooked is the fact that health and sickness are always culturally defined, and that in many societies, the ability to function is not at the heart of the matter. In the ancient Mediterranean world, where both of our scripture passages come from this morning, one state of being was more important than one's ability to act or function. So when Naaman became sick, when the leper in our lesson was sick, it took them out of their everyday place in society. They weren't allowed to interact or to touch with their family and friends. They were set apart and marginalized because of their disease. So the healers of that world focused on restoring a person to a valued state of being rather than to an ability to function. You know, sometimes in church, I think we confuse healing with curing. They're not the same thing. God doesn't promise us that we'll be free from suffering or pain or illness or disease when we come into relationship with him. But he does promise to be with us, to help lighten our burden, to make us whole, to give us a life of abundance, even in the midst of a life of pain and sickness. Like I told you in scripture, health is synonymous for wholeness. And one of the places that gives us clues in our Mark passage is that he asks to be made clean. Jesus tells him, you've been made clean. It was the same um, wording used for Naaman. He was made clean. He was made whole so he could go back into the world. But here's the thing. Sometimes wholeness doesn't take the form that we expect. It doesn't always look like we want it to. I certainly didn't pray for my dad's toe to be amputated. I really would have preferred the alternative to stay with grandpa ten toes instead of grandpa nine toes. But when healing comes to some broken area of our lives, we are invariably called to embrace a new and unexpected kind of health and wholeness that we could not have imagined. Healing is not making things the way that they were before, but manifesting a new kind of wholeness that we might not have envisioned for ourselves. When I was in seminary, one of the jobs that I did was to sit with a friend of mine named Brenda. Brenda um, was about my parents' age. 
And she had a disease that um, worked at the muscles in her body so that uh, at 40 she was um, blind and she was in a wheelchair. She couldn't walk or put any weight on her feet because all of her muscles had atrophied. So she had people, um, seminary students and other aides who would come in and we'd cook her meals for her and um, hand her her medicine and help her in and out of bed at night and in the morning. I came to really love Brenda. I worked with her for three years, spending um, two or three nights a week with her. And uh, she was a faithful churchgoer, Brenda was. And so for my first preaching class, the first person I preached my preaching class sermons to was always Brenda. I would stand in her living room and preach them. And then she would give me a very thorough critique so that I could fix it before I went to class the next day. Brenda told me a story once um, about an apartment complex that she lived in uh, where they started a house church and the friends in the apartment invited her to come into this church and um, while she was there they asked if they could pray prayers of healing over her if they could lay their hands on her and pray for her and so Brenda being a great believer in prayer told them yes absolutely you may pray for me but as they begin to pray for healing for her the conversation turned to tell her that she didn't have enough faith so that God was not making her well. In their eyes, healing and wholeness was that Brenda would be able to walk and see again. And I will never forget what Brenda said to them. She said to them, why do you get to decide whether God has made me whole? God has already decided, and God has already done that. Why do you get to decide? So this morning, we're going to invite you into a time of prayer for healing and for wholeness. Maybe for you, this starts with simply entering into a relationship with God. Maybe for you, this time of prayer means prayer for a certain physical illness or injury or sickness or pain. Maybe for you, that means uh, prayers of relief from an emotional pain that you've been carrying. Whatever it is, we're going to offer the altar to you this morning. You can come and kneel here, and Pastor Bill and I will be up here to pray for you if you would like. If you're not able or ready to come up to the altar or um, don't have anything that you feel like you need to, we invite you to stay in your pew and to be in an attitude of prayer for those you know who need healing, for those you know who don't yet know the healing power of a relationship lived in and with God. Pray for yourself. Pray for one another. Pray for those who come to the altar. Let us be in a time of prayer.
I invite you to stand with me as we join in the prayer with one voice that will be on your screen. Let's pray together. Mighty one of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we thank you that you are not silent. Help us to hear you in the world. Speak justice that we may correct our lawlessness. Speak righteousness that we may know your ways. Speak compassion that we may know your mercy. Speak abundance that we may serve others. Speak understanding that we may be peacemakers. Speak glory that we may know your son. Speak and we will listen to you. You promise of forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace when we speak our shortcomings. We speak of mistakes we have made. We speak of abandoning your ways. We speak of failures to show compassion and mercy. We speak of our need for forgiveness. Help us to speak not the words of the world, but to speak your word into the world. Mighty one of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, hear our prayer and lead us into fullness of life. Amen.